Crying babies, random delays, and microwave-nuked meals are just some of the reasons many of us find the whole process of jetting off to a new destination to be less than pleasant. But what behind-the-scenes secrets do flight attendants keep hidden from their passengers? Keep watching to find out, and might I offer you any snacks or refreshments in the meantime? Amazing. Number 10. Secret Code if you consider yourself a frequent flyer, you're probably so used to hearing various chimes at seemingly random times throughout the flight that you don't think twice about what they really mean. Although most times, a noise like this might be followed by an announcement from the cabin crew or pilot themselves, these chimes can also be considered a sort of secret code between the flight deck and the cabin crew, partly to prevent passengers from panicking. Generally, a varying number of dings can indicate a different official message. One alone might advise attendance of some upcoming choppy air, while two usually conveys that the aircraft is approaching 10,000 feet in altitude. And three can mean severe turbulence is guaranteed, advising attendance to be seated immediately. Besides these practical and effective codes, though, Pilots and attendants have also commented that these chimes might be used to communicate private messages between the main plane and the flight deck. For example, one chime from the pilots might mean, hey, can we have a coffee when you're free? While three from the cabin crew might tell the pilots, we have a passenger on board with a medical issue which could require a diversion. Number 9. Flying with the Dead it's nothing out of the ordinary to look around during your flight and see most passengers dozing peacefully in their seats, especially if your flight times aren't exactly ideal. But what if not everyone is just sleeping? Yes, while extremely rare, all members of the cabin crew must be prepared for the unfortunate event of a natural death while thousands of feet up in the air. But the truth is, there is no real course of action in place for this occasion, considering they can't exactly remove a corpse mid-flight. If this does happen, the flight attendant's primary concern is to not alert other passengers by causing a big commotion. So the best thing to do is to ensure that the deceased person has a properly buckled seatbelt and to temporarily cover them with a blanket. As very few planes have special lockers or body bags prepared for such circumstances, in some cases the passenger might also be moved to first class where there are less people so that their death is more discreet. So if you see someone looking like this during your flight, you should probably fear the worst. That's not all though because you could also find yourself flying in the company of a corpse being transported for burial, or even a cooler full of organs needed for a transplant at any given time, both of which are discreetly loaded alongside all other luggage. Number 8. Double Check Your Safety Equipment If you've already flown a few times in your life, listening to the safety announcement as you watch the cabin crew point out all the available exits might seem like a bit of a chore but you might just want to pay special attention to all the safety equipment available to you the announcement will likely tell you that there is a life jacket stored under your seat in the event of an emergency but what if this isn't always the case the life jacket is the most frequently stolen safety item on board the aircraft while it's worth double-checking that your own life jacket hasn't been pinched, you should also listen carefully to the information given about the oxygen masks which will drop down from above your head. Although some people have reservations about the amount of oxygen contained in these small bags, research shows that in the event of sudden aircraft decompression, you have about 18 seconds of useful consciousness in which to safely install your own mask. And although airplane accidents are still super rare, it pays to observe the smaller details. They might just save your life. Number 7. Airplane food is not good food. This one might not come as much of a shock, but just how much do you know about the food served up in those little foil containers? Besides the fact that no one would willingly eat it if they weren't stuck thousands of feet up in the air. All in-flight meals are cooked in industrial kitchens near the airport way before it's delivered to your individual tray table, which, by the way, is only wiped down once a day. In-flight meals are generally prepared between 12 and 72 hours before takeoff and then blast cool to 5 degrees Celsius, but they can technically be chilled for up to 5 days before breaching international food hygiene standards. 
But what really makes airplane food taste so bad? It actually comes down to basic science. As air pressure drops and humidity at 30,000 feet sinks below 12%, which is drier than most deserts, our taste buds and nasal cavity, which accounts for 80% of what we consider taste, become so dehydrated that food tastes significantly blander than it would on the ground. To enhance the basic sweet and salty tastes, extra salt, sugar, and fat is usually added to the food meaning that the average in-flight meal contains around 1,500 calories alone. Although the pilots must also choose their meal from the very same menu, they aren't allowed to pick the same option as their co-pilots as a preventative measure, which ensures that both will not suffer from potential food poisoning at once. Pretty smart, really. Number 6. Tea, Coffee, or Champagne Onboard beverages can hardly be considered a safe bet either especially the hot kind, as low cabin pressure means the water boils at 90 degrees Celsius instead of the usual 100 degrees Celsius mark, you can't expect an on-flight cup of tea to taste the same as your home brew while cruising above ground. Similarly, our increasingly dried out sinuses are also proven to alter the familiar taste of coffee, if that's more your thing. That's not all though because your favorite hot drinks are almost definitely not prepared using safely bottled water, but rather the aircraft's own tap water, which is far from ideal. You see, the process of emptying the toilet and refilling the plane with enough water for its next journey is usually carried out by the same person in quick succession during layover periods, so there's a chance the water you're drinking has been contaminated by traces of some dude's dookie. On top of this, there can also be a buildup of grit and materials in valves and pipes due to the lack of time to properly clean them between flights. Although many people enjoy a drop of the hard stuff while relaxing on board, you should also know that even the best wine might taste entirely flat up in the air because liquid thins out and becomes leaner at higher altitudes. If you're looking for a better option to wet your palate and calm your nerves, I suggest you go for a classier glass of champagne, which has its own system of preserved flavor delivered through all those tiny little bubbles. Number 5. Your smartphone won't bring down the plane, probably. One of the most common myths about flying is that if you don't adhere to the strict instruction to set your personal electronic devices to airplane mode before taking off, you could bring the whole plane down in flames. This is not entirely true. In fact, electronic carry-on devices like a laptop or your smartphone aren't individually capable of interfering with any of the critical electronics required to keep the plane airborne. The primary concern is that the radio used to access your cell network can interrupt signal communication between the flight deck and the control tower, and a plane full of people using their mobile phones could cause a fair deal of potential confusion due to combined radio emissions. Although the US has considered changing rules to enable cellular signals to be connected for passengers on planes above 10,000 feet, it is likely that the ban on receiving or making calls on board will stay firmly in place, because the last thing a cramped aircraft could do with is a bunch of people having loud telephone conversations. Number 4. The Best Seats in the House some people aren't all that bothered about seat allocation while preparing for an upcoming flight, while others will actively avoid the middle seat, or the unlucky aisle 13, which has even been removed from certain planes to ease flyers' minds. But where is the safest place to sit while flying? Research has shown that despite the extra legroom, comfier seats, and generally more peaceful experience, first class is actually the last place you want to be sat in the case of a real emergency. In 2012, scientists purposely crashed a Boeing 737 aircraft and discovered that none of the crash dummies positioned in first class would have survived in a real-life scenario, with some seats even found around 500 feet from the original crash site. It is generally believed that seats closest to the wings are stronger and therefore safer, while seats nearest to the emergency exit allow you the best chances of escape should the plane catch on fire, in which case you have about 90 seconds to get out safely. In fact, those sitting in the safest seats in the aircraft are the flight attendants themselves, who are positioned in backward-facing seats at the rear of the plane, which provide much more back and neck support. The reason why the rest of the seats on board aren't also backwards facing is, quite simply, because they cost more to install. 
given that these seats are heavier and therefore increase fuel consumption. But you know, safety first, right? Number 3. Time is money A delayed takeoff can be frustrating for us all, and sitting with your seatbelt fastened awaiting the announcement that the plane is finally preparing to move can often feel like a lifetime. But have you ever considered that the flight attendants patiently answering everyone's questions during this period aren't actually getting paid yet? Although individual pay structures may differ between airlines, both the pilots and cabin crew generally don't start getting paid until the parking brake is released or the main exit door is closed, and pay stops again when the brake has been reapplied and the door reopened. This also means that all necessary means of pre-flight preparation, including any pilot checks like weather, route coordination, and briefings, as well as attendants assisting passengers with boarding the plane and finding their seats, is technically unpaid work. This has been the traditional way of accurately calculating the shift time of airline workers for years, and unfortunately for them, airline regulations aren't too keen on changing it now. From now on, you should probably remember to be nicer to your cabin crew, because dealing with rude passengers is hard enough. But dealing with difficult individuals for free is a whole new ball game. Number 2. Sleeping on the Job Working on an aircraft can be a seriously stressful job that comes with long, irregular hours and some serious multitasking requirements, especially if you're the one flying the plane. It's no surprise then that in a survey of 500 pilots, half agreed that at least once a month their ability to fly was compromised by a lack of sleep, while in another study, 43-54% to 54 of UK, Swedish, and Norwegian pilots asked admitted to actually falling asleep while flying. W wait, what? D don't panic just yet, because autopilot is always a handy solution, plus the co-pilot can take over at any time, except for when a quarter of the pilots from that same study claim to have woken up to find their co-pilot dozing too. Sleeping on the job doesn't just happen accidentally though, as both pilots and flight attendants are given private sleeping quarters so they can sneak off for a much needed kip during long haul flights. Some sleeping quarters, like those on a Boeing 777 and 787, can be accessed by a secret locked staircase near the cockpit, while others, like the Boeing 773 cabins, are disguised as a regular overhead storage locker. These hidden areas can have anywhere from 6 to 10 beds or bunks depending on the airline, and can contain a reading light, blankets, pillows, private storage, and in some case pajamas. Although flight attendants can barely stand up, overhead sleeping quarters for pilots are a little plusher and can fit two business class seats, two sleeping areas, and enough room for either a closet, sink, or toilet. Think about that the next time your legs are squashed by the reclined seat in front of you. Number 1. The Fake Lock Popping to use the toilet is something few of us can avoid during a lengthy flight, and oftentimes you might find yourself peering up the aisle waiting for that red engaged light to turn green. But what if I told you the locking bathroom is little more than an illusion? In fact, anyone can open the laboratory from the outside, if they happen to be a flight attendant who knows how that is. As with everything else on board, the toilet must be easily accessible in the case of a sudden emergency, so the locking system has been designed with a secret latch or a switch hidden beneath the laboratory sign, which will disable the lock and allow cabin crew to open the door if someone was passed out or stuck inside. Much like the sleeping quarters, which are explained on a visible onboard sign, this is probably something you never thought to look for. And as mechanisms may vary between airlines, the chances of you figuring it out are slim anyway, not to mention facing a potential criminal offense. Were you already aware of any of these airline secrets? And will you think twice about your next selection of food and beverages on board? Let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching!